Okay, uh, I like to uh, demonstrate my steps in a kendo and also uh, sword fighting. And I like you to see if this will relate it to wrestling steps. Okay, there's a uh, three basic steps in the sword fighting. The regular walking steps. Regular walking, going to the floor and the back. Okay. There's another step that's you on the forward step. You step forward, the other one comes behind. Back. That's the forward and back. So another one is actual stepping forward, attacking mode. saw the uh, walking steps and actually we go back so forward step back foot to follow attacking mode actually it's like a skip those steps and also the main attack okay when you, when you come down on the sword my back foot is gonna come forward Here, forward. Right now, you want to change your direction. Here, you have an attacker from the front, attacker from the back. Now, another thing that Kendo, you notice the uh, pants that I'm wearing here. Yeah. Hakama. And if you uh, point my feet position, actually, they will hide. See the back foot? Yeah. Right here? There's a back foot here. You can cheat it. See that? Do you no. see my foot? No, I can't. You can't see it. It could be over here. It could be over here. Okay, when you hide that foot, the back foot, a little bit ahead of the regular position, you can actually advance further. So you're here, you're hiding it by bringing this back foot, actually to cheating. Right here. This Hakama will hide the foot. You can see it. Okay, that is it. So you can advance forward or further. How do you apply this footwork to wrestling? Okay, for example, in the wrestling, in the wrestling mode, here, actually, you can wrestle on the This way, this way, you go back, go back, or you do this stutter stance, or stutter steps. And uh, I noticed the uh, great running backs of football, they'd use that stutter steps to change the direction. Be elusive? Yes. Okay. It's because when you're walking, your step has to go one, two, one, two. If you want to change the direction, you do that step. Start a step. Because you have to have a weight on this foot to make this foot go forward or backwards. If you want to change the direction, or you want to use this foot and go here, then suddenly you want to go this direction, you have to do that step of steps. How important do you think footwork is in athletics in general? Very important. It's like uh, 
you're learning different moves, but you don't have your footsteps correctly, or you have to do that footstep at the right time, right place, you're not going to get it. When you look at, a, like we just watched you wrestle your 1965 NCAA championship match, yeah. and you, you know, I mean, your technique was years ahead of what it looked like, you know, the guys even in the late 60s, 70s, even 80s for that matter. Would you say that you guys, is, you, you know, you applied a lot of the sports from Japan, maybe sumo, kendo, and uh, judo, do you think you applied that to, to wrestling? Yes, and uh, so I was doing judo before I started wrestling, so the judo step, I'll show you the judo step. Is again, one, two, one, two step, skip step, skip step. This will go into inside trap, skip, back, skip, and push, pull, circular motion, and also the Aikido steps will apply. Motion. Pushing, pulling an opponent, yes, moving yes, them, pulling yes. them a single leg. Taking the uh, opponent's straight motion to change to a circular motion. Tra creating an angle? Yes. And that would that will change into uh, actually creating an angle in the rest of the stance. Also, the sumo. Sumo stance. Like this here. Sumo steps. A little bit different from wrestling. It's sliding motion on the ground. You don't want to lift your leg up. Slide. Okay, sometimes you have to do that in the wrestling. Slide. Alright? But also the sumo, you changing in direction. happens in the sumo matches. And also this kind of stuff here. Foot sweeps? Foot sweep motion you can do it in sumo and also in the judo. But also if you do that Aikido, this kind of circular motion. And also if you go a little bit further, you can do that in a dancing. Dancing too, huh? MMA, you think footwork's yes. important in that? MMA. MMA? Oh yeah. There's a kicking, punching, in the footstep. Definitely. It's very useful. But the one thing that you have to remember, you have to have one foot on the ground to make the other foot move. Just like in walking? Yes. If you want to change it, you have to do a stutter step. And that's what the NFL running backs do? Yeah. To change direction? Yeah. All right. Stutter steps. Can okay. I see your other blade? Yes. Trick question once you pull this out. Police officer pulls you over. Yes. Asks you if you have any concealed weapons. What do you tell them? I haven't, it hasn't happened to me, but I'll probably say this is a practice sword. There's no blaze on it. Pull on edge? Yes. Okay. Would it cut me if you hit me with that? Cut you what? Would it cut me if you hit me with it? No. No? Bruise me real bad? A little bit, except the point is sharp, so I can stab you. Okay, so you do have a potentially, you have a concealed weapon then? Well, if you openly hold it here, it's not concealed anymore. <laughs> so you can ride down the road yeah. with it hanging out the window? Okay. Sword fighting in the Japanese sword is a maid to cut, slice, just like you're cutting a steak. You don't chop it, you actually you, you cut, you make a cut, okay? And uh, there's a, 
they're going swing from the top, down. They, they get in this position here. Also, they get in this position here. But when you attack, you have to step. Right here. Okay. And also, when, when they run, in your running position, you don't just run here. And, uh, one thing that uh, you have to know is when you have a sword, or sword fighting, it's, the, it's a made to fight in outdoor. Because the length of the sword, and uh, if you fight in a, in a house, you have furnitures, you have a ceiling, you have a pillars, doors, things like that. It's very limited space and the uh, people are developed to fight in a smaller space. confined area. Yes. And they usually a lot of times use a wall as part of your defense. Okay? Because no one's gonna come behind you, so you all have to worry about 180 degrees in front of you. Yes. So, and also, you have to watch enemy from different angles. And uh, you, you looking around. Hit. Always looking over here. Okay. I cannot change my direction. Uh, unless I have to do this. Here. Yeah. All right. Do you think you can go and give Scotty Bernard a good, a good slashing for me? Where's this Scotty? Where's he? There he is, right over there with Mitch. Before that, I have to show you the running. Running? Running technique on the sword. You're carrying here. You don't run here. Coach Hato, why would you not run with a sword in front of you? Because you <laughs> fall on it? Oh, yeah, you fall on it, cut yourself? Out. You have to take it out away. You don't run here because you may have trees over here or maybe a fence over here. You have to put it behind you. I learned that from the movie. <laughs> Are right, you gonna go yeah. give him a you gonna go give him a scare? Where's Scott? Oh, he's resting. There it is. There it is right there. Oh, All right, look at anything on the elbow. Go give him a scare. Come on. Look, go. Elbow bind. You know how it goes. Boy, you do. Off the elbow. Elbow pass. Anything off the elbow. All right. Partner, <laughs> grab his head like this and grab your elbow. <laughs> anything off the elbow. <laughs> go. Ah. <laughs>